I'm just getting ready for step one of my Timia build. I'm getting all the parts in order. Uh, I am using the bearings as an upgrade instead of the stock bushings, but I've got all of the parts out of the bag and I don't know, I'm just starting to get ready. So I said before the parts bags were unlabeled, but some of the more intricate bags actually had A, B, and C. So uh, yeah, this looks like most of the shock stuff and the inside of a diff. Here's the diff cups. Here's all the axles, the drive shafts, the center drive shaft. It's plastic, but it's so far the quality of the plastic seemed pretty darn good. There is one little thing that I noticed in the instructions, which is a little bit incorrect, where it shows the flat spot on the axle being opposite of what it actually is. Like technically it should look like that. If it looked like that, then it should have the hole in the side. They don't document it like that. I'm pretty sure this is the correct part. There's nothing else that's even close to it, but uh, that's like that. So it's gotta be, it has to be that one. Now these gear diffs are interesting because there's no gasket seals on them. They just all key together and you just fill it with the Tamiya silicone grease. So here it is all built out. I could pop this one off. I mean, it's just filled with, you don't even fill it. You just put it on the teeth, the silicone grease. And then the actual uh, ring gear, it just keys into place. It has little, uh, has these little feet on it and it just keys in. It's pretty neat though. Anyway, we're making good progress. The motor is in, so spur, central drive shaft. So the front and rear drive shaft is in, the motor, and I'm building the rear diff. I'm down to the last step I'm going to do in my first session, which is at the uh, the end of maybe the third page, step 11. So I have the whole rear end assembly installed, and it's pretty good. It's uh, you know it's nicely free flowing. Motors installed, rear diffs installed, rear axles, rear body posts. We're good to go. There's only a couple things that trip me up. Uh, first of all. They want you to put these longer screws into the rear shock tower. They are really hard to get in all the way. If you don't screw them all the way in, the rear of your diff is loose. So make sure that you put those all the way in. The other thing is which body post do you use? You have two choices, B5 or B2, and it's unclear what you need to use. If you look in the supplemental, information it actually says here that for the truck you want to be using uh, attach b5 as your rear body posts but when you're building this vehicle you have options for your arms if you want to do short wheelbase or long wheelbase it's unclear i looked up some forum posts you do want the long wheelbase the other weird thing is that some people said that they got the c7 long wheelbase axle my kit only came with c2 so i have the short axles in and I'm hoping that doesn't cause me a problem later anyway uh, kit is going well so far I I like the build actually the build is fun I just wish that it wasn't all Phillips head screws because it is extremely easy to strip these out especially these these ones in the rear of the shock tower these darker colored ones are the long ones that were really hard to get in and uh, you know they're easy to strip out but overall I'm liking the build so far. It's uh, it's pretty fun. You know, it's low end, but it's fun and I'm enjoying it. This is my very last step that I'm going to do for tonight, which is to put this. This is a ball cup that they make out of plastic and uh, I need to install that in the arm. And I've been going through this stuff like mad, like almost every step, every time it shows you with one of these, that means you're supposed to use this Tamiya silicone grease. And uh, I'm a little bit concerned that I'm gonna run out before the end of the build. Like I've used probably three quarters of it already. And uh, I still need to build the front diff, which is a lot of it. I'm gonna have to be a little bit more self-conscious about uh, how much I'm using for each of these steps. Anyway, the very last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pop this ball cup in, see if I can do it on camera a little bit. Yeah, that's in. Sweet, so that was my trick for putting those ball cups in was to use the butt of a screwdriver and pop those in. All right, that's it for now. Carry right, I'm on working me. on my second session of building the TT-01E and there's one thing I came across which can trip you up, which is the screws for putting in the rear shock tower. 
These two here are 15 mil and this one's a 12. The 15 mils are easy to recognize because they're a darker color. Uh, it denotes it by the book, by the darker gray. But the 12 mil can really mess you up because almost all of the self tappers that come in that are in that silver color are 10 mil. And there's only two of them that are 12s. And here's a 12 and I just had to pull it out of the uh, out of the rear to make sure I used the right length in the rear and I did but I was scrounging around I couldn't find the other 12 mil screw and it, it's to the point where you'll get a little bit paranoid thinking oh I used that screw somewhere else because those same self silver self tappers are used everywhere especially like back in here there was three of them back in here I've, I've basically taken out those three I had taken out all of these ones here to make sure I didn't use a 12 mil I had been using all the proper screws I had been using all tens turns out that the 12 mil one was hidden away in this other bag here it's right there with all these blacks so i was thinking that i had lost it or i'd used it somewhere else nope it's right there in bag c and with all of the black screws so there's my 12 and i'm ready to carry on and those three screws are what sandwich the rear diff together. It's the same for the front, the same architecture. These three screws is what holds all of this together. The double A-arms. This it just sits here, it just floats here. Nothing, nothing holds this in yet. Same for front and rear. Nothing holds that in. It's all being held on by those three screws. So they are important. And uh, yeah, I wanna make sure that you get those right. Because if you do not plug them in, all the way you'll have a loose diff cover you know that it's done properly when it doesn't separate here anymore that's when you know that you've got them snugged in because that goes all the way up into here and uh it's it gets really hard you feel like you are going to strip out the screw and it does start hopping but uh yeah if you keep going have patience make sure you're using a a bit that fits the screw well and uh, and then you'll get them tight so that's my rear or that's my front Here's my rear, I think they're good now. So yeah, we're good to go, ready to carry on. I'm now to the point of building the shocks and friction shocks are the one thing that always turned me off of Tamiya kits and partly why I never bought one because I thought that was crazy. There would be no oil in the shocks. So um, I'm building my first friction shocks ever and it's kind of ingenious how it all locks together and how it works. But still, I mean, they're very basic entry-level shocks with no oil in them. But once you get them built, it's pretty cool. So I have a top of this one built out and the cap like locks into place. It's kind of interesting how it works. So the cap has a little hole in it and that goes down into this. And then this locks the cap in and then you put the ring up under and then you spring and then the bottom part is key do you see how it's got that little slot in it and it can only go in the one way you can only get it to fit in once and then once you slide it down you twist it 90 degrees and then it locks in and then that's your shock built they're basic but functional got to build three more Okay, that's another two hours in, and I'm stopping on step 23, and here's the vehicle. So the front and rear suspension is done, the shocks are installed, the body posts are installed, the front bumper is on, and yeah, and the front steering is partially assembled with the bell cranks. So the next steps are putting in the servo and the electronics and all of the bracing. So it's get your electronics ready, get your servo ready. Uh, and then get in all the electronics and the final bracing and then it's on to the final cosmetics and wheels So I'd say the build is about three-quarters complete already four hours in it is a quick vehicle to build I have been enjoying it The most annoying part is just dealing with the Phillips head screws because they're so easy to strip out and Almost all of the screws are self tapping. So yeah, you got to be a little bit careful about that Especially for things like this one putting this one into the servo arm is difficult as well as the big ones that hold the uh, the diff covers in place are the most difficult screws to install. Okay, continuing the TT01E build and I'm ready to start on some electronics on step C is where they want you to start pulling together your servo, your ESC, battery, receiver and get everything all leveled up for when you build the steering links, get the steering all set up, uh, installing the servo, 
and then you get onto the final braces and chassis assembly. You may not like this, but I think I'm going to be going with Traxxas because I have all of this stuff. This is the stock servo out of the TRX4 and I upgraded it with the Amazon, the DS3218 servo. So this is the stock 2075X. It has like 125 or 140 ounce inches of torque. Should be plenty fast enough, standard size servo. The lead on it is a little bit long, but that should be fine. So we're gonna go with that. And then for the radio, again, Traxxas. I like my Traxxas radios just because they're multi-model memory and they have the app and I can do everything that I need to do and they're cheap. So, you know, 30 bucks will get you a TSM, TQI receiver, Traxxas link. So that'll be going in for the radio system. And then, like I mentioned before, the stock electronics, it comes with the ESC. So we'll take a look at that soon and motor as well. All right, carrying on. Just got the electronics uh, dry tested for the first time. New power. I'm just taking it easy and breaking in the motor just a little bit. And we have steering. So we'll set all my trims and adjustment and stuff, but out of the box it worked. And for those who were wondering, my ESC did come out of the box in brushed mode. I know a lot of the other people have been saying that these are coming out of the box in brushless mode. So clearly it just depends on what kit you get. And I did try and use it where orange was connected uh, to the motor and it didn't like using the blue and the orange. So I did use the blue and yellow as shown here. So follow what it comes with and you'll be okay. Now I just got to get it all put in and cleaned up. Cool. 